Fayetteville police arrested three people after neighbors complained they were using their home for dog fights and to sell drugs. Thank y'all for tuning back in to your favorite channel, Pelican Bay Dog Talking News for the day. Giving it to you the way I always do, fair and unbiased. Some gonna like it, some ain't, man. Some gonna like it, some ain't. Y'all hit that button, y'all hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so you be getting the you know, notifications when the video's dropping, man. When the video's dropping, don't forget to hit that like button before you get up out of here. Drop down in the comments like your brothers always do. We about to get into that dog news and talk for the day. Let's get into it. All right, to start that news off for the day, you know, we're going to talk about bloodlines. We're going to talk about a little bit about that Jocko stuff, Termite, Little John, um, different things. We're going to get into them lines. You know what I'm saying? We're going to talk about a little bit of dog news, what's going on around the country. You know what I'm saying? But first, I want to send a big shout out to everybody that was rocking with me in the live last night. I appreciate all y'all brothers and sisters. Um... Anybody, I made a list because I want to send a special thanks out and I didn't want to try to remember it because I know I'm going to forget somebody and I still probably forget somebody. And y'all, please don't hold it against me. You know what I'm saying? It ain't nothing personal. Appreciate you showing up if I miss you on my you know, my little list. Appreciate you. Matter of fact, I know I missed some folk on my list, you know, but shout out to all y'all brothers, man. First off, I want to say shout out to Brother Pro, you know what I'm saying, j Bo, p and m Kennel, and Brother Martin, you know what I'm saying? Even though Brother Martin wasn't there, shout out to you. As always, brother, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to those brothers because they didn't have to be there, but they chose to be there with us last night. You know what I'm saying? Saturday night, PBK9's Dog Talk Live. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to y'all brothers. All right. First off, I want to say shout out to my man, City Boy Kennels. You know what I'm saying? Um, Dreadlock, Russell Shaw, Liquid Lucky, Hemi James, um, Einstein uh, Roofchild, Jay's Moonlight. Dickie Foster, Fat Farm Ray, um, Scratch Line, JT Yard, uh, Jeep Red Boy Rascal, Going Hard Kennel, uh, Vinny, Cannon G, uh, Uncle Willie, Ed Volatin. Shout out to you, Ed, man. Big Ed, shout out to you, my brother. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Frederick, um, thanks for that uh, donation last night, Frederick, man. Thanks for that donation. Uh, so Crates XL, man. So Crates XL. I think that's how you pronounce it, man. Shout out to you, my brother. The Hash Puppy. Shout out to the Hash Puppy in the building last night, man. White Chocolate. You know what I'm saying? Soul Power, a.k.a. Gassed Up Kennels, man. Shout out to you. I see you in the building last night, brother. I appreciate it. Summer I see you in there, too, my brother. Appreciate you. Wolfie Studios, High Key Lee, and Hellcat Dog, man. You know what I'm saying? I know I probably missed somebody. But shout out to all my brothers that was in there. You know, we had a good time. Appreciate all the positive energy from all the dog men. You know, we're going to keep on doing it. You know what I'm saying? Um, some are going to like it, some ain't. You know, like I always tell you. Some are going to like it, some ain't. Now, we're going to get into the pedigrees. But first, let's get into the news. You know, let's see what's going on around the country when it comes to these dogs. First off, you know, uh, this first video I'm about to show y'all, uh, I looked at the video and you, you a lot of y'all seen this video that I'm about to show you. My thing is, I think, I really think somebody was caught on the video uh, taking the dog from the area maybe where it was at. You know what I'm saying? Maybe the person rescuing the dog or something. Um, that's what I'm saying. Uh, maybe it was happening. If If this particular person was not rescuing Taking that dog from a, a bad situation to home to get it better, then this is dog abuse 101. You know what I'm saying? Whoever dog this is, this is dog abuse 101. And I'm going to show you the video because, like I say, maybe I'm giving it the benefit of the doubt for this person. 
Maybe they was rescuing a dog and taking them to a better situation. And somebody caught it on camera and made it to some other stuff. Made it seem like, oh, they was walking a starved dog or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Now, maybe maybe they was walking a starved dog. I don't know. But I'm about to show you the video. And all I'm saying is, maybe I'm, I'm just giving it the benefit of the doubt. But let's get into it. Now, you don't see many skinny ones like that. You know what I'm saying? You don't see many skinny ones like that. I'm surprised she making it to where she going at. You know what I'm saying? If that's her, though, that's jail time right there. You know what I'm saying? They, they, they lock people up for all kind of things. But if that's her, though, it ain't no thing on this taking that dog away and just say, oh, I'm taking the dog away and put it in the pound. No, man. No. That don't make no sense for a dog to be that skinny. You know what I'm saying? That don't make, that ain't no one meal, miss. That ain't no two meals, miss. That ain't no week worth of food missing. You know what I'm saying? That's that's a lot of food missing. I don't know how much it is, but it's more than a week. You know what I'm saying? That dog ain't eating a long time. You know what I'm saying? But it is what it is, man. PBK9 is giving any of that dog news the way I told you like I, like I always do. Let's move on to the next one right here. You know we got some folk in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Got an abandoned house. And they done turned into a crack spot, dog fighting arena, and every damn thing. Got busted up in the motherfucker. Well, I don't know if they got busted in it. You know what I'm saying? But the little spot got raided. You know? Uh, apparently, your neighbors weren't cool as you thought they was. You know what I'm saying? Apparently, your neighbors weren't cool as you thought they was. But, hey, it is what it is. Let's play that video clip. Fayetteville police arrested three people after neighbors complained they were using their home for dog fights and to sell drugs. The police receiving multiple reports about people squatting inside the empty home on Cheltenham Road. When they got there, police found evidence of guns and drugs and animal cruelty involving pit bulls. The three were removed from the home and the owner was notified. Now here we got another animal cruelty case, but this one is a little different than such. You know what I'm saying? Um... For all my brothers who are bird men, you know, all my cock brothers who like, you know, the gang cocks, um, you know, you might be interested in this was about to play right here. You know, check this cock fighting bus in the Carolinas not too long ago. One of our top stories tonight, thanks to a neighbor who spoke up, Joe. Memphis Animal Services seized nearly 100 birds from a man charged with animal cruelty for illegal cockfighting. And Action News 5's Stephanie Douglas has been looking into this story today. She joins us now with more about the man responsible and where those birds are now. Stephanie? Little chicks to roosters were all removed from a home off Dunn Avenue Wednesday. A neighbor says they're not surprised because chickens roam the area all the time. Oh, I saw the birds all the time. A neighbor on Dunn Avenue who spoke with Action News 5 anonymously says she's not surprised by the crimes. 45-year-old Pedro Hernandez was arrested for over 100 charges of animal cruelty Wednesday. Because they have so many little chickens, too. I mean, there's roosters, chicks, and chickens. A tip from a neighbor led to Memphis Organized Crime Unit vice team to execute a search warrant. Detectives say inside the home, officers found caged roosters with no food or water that appeared to be near death or injured. They also found cash, multiple ropes, syringes, and spurs used for cockfighting. It don't surprise me. Memphis Animal Services is currently caring for all 90 birds. <laughs> the shelter is now in crisis mode. The birds adding to the 150% capacity the shelter was already facing due to a dog overpopulation. We need to get some dogs out of this building so that our capacity is low enough that our staff has the ability to properly care for this additional 90 animal influx that we weren't expecting as of 3 o'clock yesterday afternoon. Memphis Animal Services say the birds are on a temporary hold for testing. For now, the public can help by fostering and adopting dogs and puppies from the shelter. It feels like we're a broken record sometimes. Help, adopt, foster, adopt, foster. Gosh, do we need that help today. 
Well, according to Memphis police, Hernandez is charged with 15 counts of aggravated animal cruelty, animal fighting, and 83 counts of cruelty to animals. His bond has not been set at this time, but he is due in court tomorrow morning at 9. Reporting live in studio, Stephanie Douglas, Action News 5. Now we get into them bloodlines, brother. Y'all just roll with me, you know what I'm saying? Y'all just roll with me, you know. Well, we starting it off. We starting it off like that, and we gonna get into some more stuff. You know what I'm saying? But this brother right here, you know, I forgot what state is in. Let, let the article play or whatever. This brother right here, he got charged with um, animal abuse or animal cruelty or something like that. You know, kicked the dog and left the dog tied up on um. Well, they said he hung the dog. They said he hung the dog, but once I got into the article, they said he kicked the dog and hung the dog on um like a business door put the leash on a business door so if he put the leash on a business door then he didn't hang the dog he abandoned the dog that's what he did you say he hung the dog like i'm looking at the article when i go into the article i'm expecting him here that he took the dog and hung him from a tree or something or hung him from a high area and the dog left the ground most leashes that you have if you hang it from a business door which is a regular sized door most leashes that you have if you tie it to the doorknob it'll go straight to the floor your average leash leash is not short enough to when you tie it to the doorknob that you can hang a dog from it you know that gotta be like a little shoestring or something like that and the dog ain't gonna hang from those shoestring so basically what the brother did was uh, he abused the dog by kicking it and hurting it and all that stuff and then he left it, he abandoned the dog. And uh and he looked he looked kind of uh, serious. This brother looked serious. You know, I'm gonna show you the picture in the article, you know, in the back. This brother looked serious, and um, you know, I know he wasn't something ain't, you know, the light bulb ain't all the way there. You know what I'm saying? Um, but it, it is what it is, man. It is what it is. PBK Nines give you that dog news we always do. Let's get into it. Tuesday for animal cruelty will not have his dog returned to him, Marshall Police said Thursday in a news release. Jacob Edwards, 30, was taken into custody after witnesses saw him kicking the dog then hanging it by the leash on a door of a business on East End Boulevard. Now, my bulldog was from across the world, from New Zealand, from uh, South Africa, you know what I'm saying, from all across the world, all the way back to North Carolina, South Carolina, New York, Detroit. You know what I'm saying? Um, Florida. All my dog brothers, you know what I'm saying? From one side to the other. It's time for some tough love tonight. Bulldoggers, it's time for some tough love tonight. Yes, it is. We've been talking. We've been talking. But let's get into it. Let's get into it. We about to get them pedigrees. We're going we gonna to calm it down with them pedigrees. You know what I'm saying? And we're going to talk about them pedigrees. You know? Um, but let's talk about this right here first. I want y'all to watch this video. This part two of the dog fighting bus in North Carolina that I just gave y'all the video to a little while ago. This part two to this, because we're going to break this down and we're going to get some hard love tonight. You know what I'm saying? We're going to break this down and we're going to see why Pelican Bay K-9s say what he say. Why Pelican Bay K-9s move the way he move, go the routes he go, and preach what he preach when it comes to this, as Brother Lopez say. The real American pit bull terrier. You know what I'm saying? Hey, it is what it is, right? So what I want y'all to do is check this video out. This video is from the dog bus that I done showed you in a couple videos back. And then we're going to stop it and we're going to talk about something. So check it out. Check it out. And, and holler at me in a minute. HKY.com and on our YouTube channel, including our top stories, the crime report, local sports, and community focus. In today's news, 13 suspects face charges and are wanted by the Iredell County Sheriff's Office in connection with a dog fighting ring. The suspects are all males ranging in age from 22 to 56. They are from Statesville, Lenore, Mooresville, Charlotte, Ashboro, Greensboro, and Newberry, South Carolina. On Saturday, Iredell County deputies received information from an anonymous caller. Iredell County deputies received information from an anonymous caller regarding a possible dog fighting event on Senna Lane, east of Statesville. Hold up. You heard that? What that man said? Hold up, man. Rewind that back. Rewind that back 
Hear what that man said again. Hold up. Iredell County deputies received information from an anonymous caller. Now, did that man say a call from an anonymous source? Okay. I tell you what. Now, let's break this down, brothers. We talking bulldog talk tonight, right? Let's talk some bulldog talk. Men talk. We talking men, right? We ain't talking beta males. We talking alphas, right? We talk alphas tonight. Y'all brothers alphas or y'all betas tonight? You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm shout out to all my alphas. Look at Lucky, Russell Shaw and them boys. Ed Violet and them boys. You know what I'm saying? All my alphas. City boys and them boys. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to all my alphas out there rocking the night. You know what I'm saying? But check it out, right? Check it out, right? Let me ask you something. Did you know, you know what I'm saying, that I just went and bought um, five candy bars from the store? Did you know that? Did, did any of you brothers and sisters know that I just went to the store and bought five candy bars? Okay. Now, did any of you brothers know that me and my um, girl got in an argument and I left out the house and stayed, you no, know, stayed away for the night to keep let things calm down? Did you know that? Okay. And we're gonna keep going. Huh? I'm gonna ask you some more stuff. Did you know? That I ever had a yard accident with my Belgian Malawa when my Belgian Malawa got loose and want to go over there and, and, and jump on one of my other dogs. Did you know that? No. Okay. Let me ask you another question. Like, did you know that um, when I was uh, 15, 16, um, I ran from a fight? You know what I'm saying? One of the only times I ever ran from a fight with no weapons. Got snuffed out. You know what I'm saying? Dude walked up to me. I should have been paying attention. Got snuffed. I start seeing blue stars instantly. I fell back. I start seeing blue stars. And then I seen about three people. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie to you. I seen three people. Blue stars first. Then I seen three people. And I haul ass. You know what I'm saying? Got the hell up out of there until I can see one person. You know what I'm saying? Did, I, did you know that? No. You know why, brothers and sisters? Because I didn't tell you. I didn't tell you. You didn't know nothing about none of that until I said all that just now on the thing, right? So we talking hard love right tonight for these dog brothers that's supposed to be men. You know what I'm saying? Junkyard men. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, we talking. One of y'all brothers told somebody that told somebody that told somebody. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. You want the fake stuff or you want the real? You know what I'm saying? Because listen here. That man said with an anonymous call that they all they knew that them brothers was going to do whatever they was going to do. So that means in order to get an anonymous call, that means somebody that y'all told dropped the dime on y'all. You know what I'm saying? Somebody that one of y'all brothers told Drop the dime on y'all. You know what I'm saying? They didn't hear the dogs over there making all kind of racket and, and noise and stuff. They didn't um, ride past and see all the cars out there deep, none of that. No, they got an anonymous call. There's a dog fight going on. The only way they can do that is for one of these brothers who can't keep their mouth closed, you know what I'm saying, telling somebody, you know what I'm saying, and... and and, and like I say, they might be ain't told nobody. They told somebody. They told the police. You know what I'm saying? And look what happened. Boom. Boom. That's why Pelican Bay do what they do. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody talk that talk that talk. But it's like, a, it's like when you boom, catch somebody. You know what I'm saying? A lot of brothers, they, 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 they can't go. Uh, uh, you know when I was in them streets? You know, it's like. People want people to know they shot somebody or want people to know they did this to somebody. A lot of people will get away if they just say, oh, I don't want nobody to know. I don't care about my nobody knowing. I don't need no cool points, no nothing. You know what I'm saying? You'll get away. But then the ones, oh, yeah, I, I got to tell this person, oh, yeah, I did that, man. Yeah, I didn't want to did that. I didn't want to did that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, now you gone. Now you gone. You know what I'm saying? You want some hard love in the night? Yes, yeah, sir. We talking PBK9 is going to give it to you, Mike. One of y'all boys, one of y'all boys running y'all mouth, like I told y'all before. Back in my days, when I was running with Sambo, 
<laughs> it was me and the opponent. You know what I'm saying? I didn't roll with no damn 30 people. 30 people for what? I got 30 people that I hang with in the streets, but I ain't got no 30 dog man coming to me with no damn show. My damn girl definitely ain't coming to no damn show because I got to get the hell up out of there back in them days and a damn show ain't going to have nobody lingering behind to get me caught back then. So why the hell would I bring my damn girl? You know what I'm saying? Now, all right, now I'm going to take this, I'm going to put this out there like that for, for, for hard love, right? Now, we talking brothers, how much do you even care about your woman? Do you care about your old lady? Both of us can't be in a fucked up spot if I get fucked up out here. Somebody got to get the bail money. Somebody got to get me out. We both can't be in jail if the kid's at home. You know what I'm saying? What, what kind of, you want me to kick it? I'm keeping it real tonight. You know what I'm saying? We got kids at home. How the hell am I going to be bringing you out here? You know what I'm saying? Uh, it don't matter if we got kids. Somebody got to be home. Somebody got to tell the story. You know what I'm saying? Somebody got to get the other person out. You know? Um... It is, is what it is. You know what I'm saying? And then, like I, like I say, back in my days, when I rolled with one or two people, oh, if I, if I decide to bring a woman, shit, man, I tell you what, it's going to be, if somebody, if it's an anonymous call from one of the people from my days, then I know it ain't but three people back there, four people back there. Me, maybe one or two people with me, and, and, the, and the person and one or two people with him. So that's maybe five, six people at the most. Anonymous call. Now we about to start doing some damn exit out and figuring out who did this anonymous call. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Back in my days, because we could do that when you got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people. You can't do that with no 50, 70, 50 and 60 people. <laughs> no, the hell you can't. You can't put that blame on nobody. So listen here, brothers. Don't put the blame on nobody unless you got solid proof. Because you got damn 50 people at the damn show. You know what I'm saying? And then, like I say, 50 people, two people with dogs. So what the hell all the other people come in? Money? See, a real dog, a real brother who ain't really into dogs and he just ended the money, he just send his money on. You know what I'm saying? He got it like that. You know what I'm saying? Send that bread on. It's time to come to keep over. Uh, you ain't got to beat up. You got confidence in that dog. Send that bread. You know what I'm saying? You can't come. You know, if you got to come to send the bread, then keep keep your bread. You know, it is what it is, man. It is what it is. I'm just giving you to fair and unbiased, like I always say, man. Your brothers can't, you can't blame nobody but yourselves. You can't blame PBK for getting up here talking about it. You can't blame nobody but your damn self because you told somebody and they gave the, uh, the anonymous tip up. You know what I'm saying? You might be told somebody who had a dope charge. You know what I'm saying? You probably told somebody who had a shooting charge. You know what I'm saying? Uh, some dumb shit, you know? But, hey, you told somebody you should have kept your damn mouth shut. You know what I'm saying? You should have kept your mouth shut. And I'm talking to whoever dog it was. You know what I'm saying? If you're going to do anything illegal, common sense tell you to keep your mouth shut because you got folk out here who work every day you know what I'm saying? To lock up people who doing something illegal. All you got to do is make one mistake. You know what I'm saying? One mistake. You got to be perfect, man. You got to be perfect when you're doing illegal stuff. Don't make no difference what you're doing. You got to be perfect. So do you want to live that perfect life? Is what you got to ask yourself. Every move got to be perfect. You know what I'm saying? Every move. It ain't no half-assing. You know what I'm saying? And, and guess what? I'm giving it from my standpoint. In my days, the laws weren't like it is now. You know what I'm saying? Laws weren't like it is now. PBK nines know what the hell to do. You know what I'm saying? When I put that dog on the scale, you can best believe it. We going to a damn show. You know what I'm saying? It don't matter about no damn uh, what the hell the background did, who the hell did it in the background. I know what I'm doing with my dogs. You know what I'm saying? With my dogs, I know what I'm doing. You know, and I know what I want the people to get my dogs to do. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, um, take care of them, treat them right, and do the right things with them. You know what I'm saying? That's all that matter. At the end of the day, um, that's all I can really worry about. You know what I'm saying? Everything else is out of my hands. But, like I say, we talking hard love tonight. And out of y'all boys that made that move, one of y'all should have kept y'all, or all y'all should have kept y'all damn mouth shut. 
You know what I'm saying? Some of y'all shouldn't have been there from the start. You know what I'm saying? Like I said before on my last video. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> y'all brothers different in y'all days than my days. You know what I'm saying? Uh, for one, you better start buying some property. You know what I'm saying? You want me to, we talking hard love tonight. You're trying to do all the stuff you're doing and nobody own no damn property. You're going to all these places you're renting and going in vacant houses in the middle of the city doing this and doing that and then wonder why the shit going to fucking damn shit. You can't park no more than three cars there without it being noticed. <laughs> shit, the boys back in the days had property. Go to people's property. Close off the gates. Go to this place. Man, let's hear <laughs> Different era, different ball game. Like I say, Y'all thinking, y'all a whole lot reckless than them brothers was back then. And y'all laws is a whole lot stiffer than brothers was back then. You know what I'm saying? And brothers move right. Like I say, shit. Hey, it is what it is, man. We talking dog love, dog hard love tonight. We talking, uh, uh, you know, the real, the real. It's, it's going to be what it's going to be, man. Uh, you can't, like I say, you can't blame nobody. All you can blame is one of y'all folk that was at that damn show told somebody that they dropped a dime on you. You know what I'm saying? It's too late to worry about it now. You got to handle what you got to handle. You know what I'm saying? Um, yo, it is what it is. Whether you know who did it or not, the more people y'all brought that with you, the less chances you got knowing who did it. You know what I'm saying? Less chances you got. The way y'all modern dog men are sought up, you're sought up for to not know who dropped a dime on you. Because you're bringing 60, 70, or 80 people there at a time. You're never going to know who dropped a dime on you. You know what I'm saying? Like I always say, everybody who went to a show in the last damn year, one of them kind of shows, and you took at least 40 people, you can guarantee at least 100, 100 people knew about it at the time you was doing it. You could guarantee at least 100 people Knew about what you was doing when you was doing. You was just blessed to make it out of what you were doing. Better go home and say your prayers to whatever Lord you pray to. You know what I'm saying? That's what you better be doing. Because you made it out of that. You know what I'm saying? If you've been to one of them big shows lately, you can bet your bottom dollar. <laughs> the wrong person knew. You just made it out luckily. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is, man. But we're going to move on to these pedigrees. Because we about to talk about termite. You know what I'm saying? Because my brother Pro made a good statement last night about termite and the, the Mayfield stuff and being some of the, you know, the, the strongest stuff with the Mayfield stuff in it. You know, um, and I just want to show some other pedigrees and show what that Little John stuff got to offer when it comes to the Jocko stuff and other dogs in that pedigree. Because we're going to get a little outside of the pedigrees and talk more about the dogs. You know what I'm saying? And Brother Vernon uh, Starr made a good uh, made a um, statement about uh, Chavis Ho being one of the only, um, you know, um, Jocko dogs with, well, well, not the only, but one of the highest percentage of Jocko dogs at that time. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to talk about that too. Now, when we look at Termite Pig, you know, great dog, Coming down off Dangerous Dam, which is off Jocko. Okay, um, and we look at uh termite pedigree, we see uh Hank Hank in the third generation, and we see Jocko two times in the third generation, and we see Hank uh two times in the fourth generation. Okay, um, no, like I said, great bread dog. Um a lot of brothers on my side of town complain about the termite dogs as uh, far as the um, the offspring directly off termite. But I do know some brothers, like I say, from my side of town that had champions directly off termite. You know what I'm saying as well. But like I said, termite is coming off Dangerous Dan and uh, uh, I want to say a Jocko Red Boy female. You know what I'm saying? A female with more Jocko than Red Boys. This is a percentage of Red Boy and a higher percentage of Jocko. Okay? Now, the thing I want to talk about is what makes the Little John dog different from the Termite stuff. Yeah, Termite got a lot of Jocko in them. You know what I'm saying? But what makes that stuff different 
And I, 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 I hear a lot of people talking about different things when it comes to the Jocko stuff, but what I don't hear nobody talking about this dog. You know what I'm saying? And and this is what distinguishes the difference in, you know, uh these breedings with these dogs. Uh okay, we got Jocko and we got Hank. Let's go to uh, Walkamall's Ace. All right. The Ace dog. Let's go to Ace. Okay. Now if you look in Ace pedigree, you know, you're gonna see you go to the back back there. You're going to see uh, a, a dog that's not going to be familiar in everybody's pedigree. This dog is not going to be in everybody's pedigree because this dog wasn't bred as much as all the other dogs, you know, compared to. But this dog is a major factor in the pedigree. Argo is Jocko Little Mate brother. Okay. Now we got apples as well through the green sandy stuff. We got apples in there. So we got Jocko. We got apples. And we got Argo. You know what I'm saying? All in one dog. You know what I'm saying? All from one litter. Now, what a lot of brothers can't tell you is who else got Argo in their dog line that's running right now today. What other red what other red boy Jocko got Argo in it? You know what I'm saying? Coming that's still pumping their stuff, you know, a high percentage of the Jocko stuff in it. They got Argo. See, we forget about a lot of dogs, you know what I'm saying? And, and all them dogs bring that Mayfield stuff back into that little John line, that Welcome Alls A stuff. You know what I'm saying? Um, all that stuff, you know, that Mayfield come back strong with it. You know what I'm saying? Um Jocko, great producer. You know, went down in history as a great producer. Um, Apples, great producer. Went down in history as a great producer. But we don't hear brothers in modern day dog time, you know what I'm saying? Because we hear the old brothers talk about it. The old schoolers know about Argo. It's the modern day dog brothers that don't know about Argo. And that's the difference between Termite and, 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 and Little John, you know what I'm saying? And and basically them two, because now, if you look at Jocko and, and Apple's pedigrees, pay attention to some. You know what I'm saying? Look at the pedigree. You know, um, great dogs. We all know there was great dogs, right? If you look at a pedigree, there was no inbreeding did in them dogs. You know what I'm saying? One side came maybe on the Mayfield side. You know, I, I'm not really paying attention to it, but I'm talking about far as the top and the bottom. You know what I'm saying? Two different, two different strain of dogs. And, and if you really look at it, it's almost scattered bread. You know what I'm saying? And then from Jocko on down to what we got now, all the inbreeding was going on. Now, where do y'all think the, 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 the goal was? And do you think they reached the goal? Do you think the better dogs came after Jocko? Or the better dogs came to produce Jocko? Like Hank and the rest of them boys. You know what I'm saying? They wasn't so inbreded. The dogs that wasn't so inbred are the dogs that we trying to bring down and inbreed from. Like we we saying we got uh, Red Boy Jocko or Bolio or Eli or Jeep or Chinaman or whatever we got. We inbreeding it, we inbreeding it, we inbreeding it to get the closest thing that we can to these dogs. But the people that had those dogs didn't inbreed to get those dogs. They had got a whole bunch of scattered bred dogs to get the great dogs that we inbreed trying to bring back. So maybe we should just start doing some scattered breeding and we'll get great dogs that we can start bloodlines from. You know what I'm saying? Dogs that we can start bloodlines from and not just papers and all that crazy stuff, man. Not just papers and all that crazy stuff. You know, because like I said before, uh, Termite himself, probably a great dog. Brother probably didn't get the dogs out to certain people, and maybe that's why the line didn't get uh, progressed like a lot of lines did over the time. You know what I'm saying? Um, but at the end of the day, it's enough of them out there. You know what I'm saying? And just because Dangerous Dan is off Jocko, 
we can't say that Dangerous Dan was producing like Jocko other offspring. You know what I'm saying? If we say that, then we going by reading pedigrees, saying, oh, just because he off Jocko, that means he going to throw the same thing. You know what I'm saying? Dangerous Dan might be not a producer like the other dogs coming off Jocko. You know, they bred different ways. You know, maybe he went too tight when it came to the Jocko stuff. You know what I'm saying? Termite is a real inbred dog. You know what I'm saying? Termite was real inbred. You know, but Jocko himself was inbred. You know what I'm saying? And Jocko himself produced better than Termite did. You know? He produced Termite. I mean, he produced, he was Termite uh, granddaddy. You know, uh, he produced better than uh, Termite and Dangerous Dan did. Jocko did. He produced better than both of them dogs. So if you ask me, Dangerous Dan didn't have that damn, uh, that golden vein in him. You know, he had it and said, oh, yeah, he off Jocko. You know what I'm saying? But he produced Termite, and Termite has got a low percentage himself. You know what I'm saying? And like I said before, it, it, it may could come from the guy who had termite and he just didn't breed termite as much as some of the other Jocko dogs bred. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, you just got to look at it, man. You just got to look at it and look at how these pedigrees shot up and look at how we read pedigrees today. And like I always tell you, we think because we, we all off the same litter that we going to all produce the same way when it comes to certain things, you know? Um... It don't matter what line of dogs you got. You can have big John dogs, little John dogs. You can have um, um, CML little John dogs. You can have ship dogs. You can have any kind of dogs. And, and puppies off them litters going to produce differently. Because this brother over here got a dog off ship that's producing. Don't mean your dog off ship going to produce that way. And we get so confused in that so often. You know what I'm saying? We get so confused in that so often that it's, it's crazy. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy. And, and brothers will have better bulldogs if we stop thinking that way. You know what I'm saying? This brother over here saying he got a good dog. He telling you he got a good dog. He ain't even mentioned nothing about the pedigree yet. He telling you he got a good dog. What you need, first thing you want to scream out is, what's the pet on him? What's the pet on Because now if it's a pet you don't like, you don't want to breed to him. What's the pet on him? First thing you screaming, man. What's the pet on him? And we all do it. We all do it. You know what I'm saying? But like I say, we all just trapped in this pedigree-ass mind state of modern day thinking about uh, your dog going to produce the same thing the next man dog going to produce because they're off the same type of dogs. And it don't work that way. Every dog produced differently. Red Boy produced different than all his siblings. Jeep produced dis different than all his siblings. Honey Bunch produced different than her siblings. Uh, you know, all dogs produce differently. You know, look back in history. When have you seen the whole litter that produced the same? You know, and when you see litters that produce like that, those are considered the great litters. You only see that in great litters when all the litters in that whole litter produce great dogs. You see it. You see it. But when you see it, that's what you call a great litter. You know what I'm saying? A great litter. But you don't see it all the time. You know what I'm saying? And like I said before, your great might not be my great. His great might not be your great. Everybody great is different. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of folks see, they, they, they be like, oh, my dog great, my dog great. But in actuality, you know, because like like some of them brothers say, uh, uh, going hard, them boys be saying sometime on their show, a lot of these brothers ain't played in the fast lane. So your lane, what you consider great, is what he consider mediocre. You know what I'm saying? So when you when you take what you think is great out and put it on what is really great, then you see what a bulldog is. You know what I'm saying? Then you see why brothers say that's a bulldog. You know what I'm saying? That's the real name. That's what a bulldog is. Y'all y'all talk too loosely with that phrase. Everything ain't a damn bulldog. You know what I'm saying? Some shit is American pit bull terry. You know, but some brothers out there got bulldogs. You know what I'm saying? And it's gonna be that way to the end of time. PBK now is giving it to you the way I always do. Fair and unbiased. Some gonna like it, some ain't. You know what I'm saying? Just giving it to you. Now, Brother Vernon Starr said the Chavis whole dog had a high percentage of Jocko, and he did. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not here to dispute that with you, Brother Vernon. All I'm here to do is show you some of the stuff that I had 
off of Ch coming down off of Chavis Hole back in the days. You know what I'm saying? So I want y'all to check this pedigree out real quick. Now, this is a female I had. Her name was Miss Jocko. You know what I'm saying? Miss Jocko, she was coming down off Robinson Stone Red, which is off of Chavis Ho, bred back to a, um, a Big John female. Robinson Stone Red bred to a female directly off Big John to get my, my female, Miss Jocko. You know what I'm saying? And then I had the son of that, which was Pelican Bay's Gracie. You know what I'm saying? He was off of uh, Miss Jocko and Diablo. Uh, no, Diablo that's coming down off Big John. So we had uh, basically was 25% Chavis Ho and 75% Big John. You know what I'm saying? And uh, Gracie. And you know I named him after old Royce Gracie and them boys. His name, that's why they called him Gracie. That's why I named him Gracie. You know? And this him right here. But yeah, my brothers, I'm just showing you some of the old dogs I had, like some of that Jocko stuff. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to your brother, Vernon Starr. Um, shout out to you, all my dog brothers out there, the Facebook doggers, all the brothers, man. Shout out to all the brothers, bulldogging in the right way. Um, I hope y'all enjoy this show. Um, or oh, another dog that's relevant in that Jocko line. You know what I'm saying? Because we talking about that Jocko stuff now. You know what I'm saying? We talking Super Nance Boots. Super Nance Boots. Argo. Jocko. Apples. You know what I'm saying? Um, some key dogs. You know what I'm saying? Key dogs. Argo is a key dog in that Little John stuff that a lot of people don't got in their Red Boy Jocko. You know what I'm saying? Because Argo wasn't spread all around. Much like how Termite wasn't spread all around. But Termite was bred a whole lot more than Argo. You know what I'm saying? A whole lot more than Argo. But the genetics is there. The genetics is there. But I hope y'all had a good day, man. Like I said, good night. PBK9 is giving it to you the way I always do. Fair and unbiased. Some gonna like it. Some ain't. Y'all stay safe. Y'all stay legal. So y'all stay good. PBK9s. And I'm out.